Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing another video of checking out one of your guys' solar systems. So today we've got one system from the user CCAP in Discord, so massive thank you to them for sending in this system. And their system is called the um, Oxlong AB Binary System, so without further ado, it's already on the subscribed here. Let's go straight into this, so there it is. Okay, what have we got? Let's have a look. Ooh, all along the loading, okay. Ah, uh, you can see why there's a lot of particles. Okay. So, hello and welcome to the Oxlong AB system. It is a binary star system between a sun, starlight, or stun star, between a sun-like star, Calaris, and a red dwarf, so Solis. Pronunciation, letters such as the O and the A are simply red. Uh, for example, U is indoor and... Oh, that's going to be... <laughs> oh, you're testing my, uh, my skills here. Right, so... Uh, Keralis is a sun-like star that is leaving its main sequence. It will become a red giant star soon. After a few hundred million years, it will become a white dwarf. It is host to seven planets, three asteroid belts, and its binary partner. So, uh... It's a Solis there. Okay. Right. So that's the star itself there. So on its way to becoming a red giant... First of the planets, we've got Inferno. First planet. It is heavily cratered, partially meaning super Earth and thin gray atmosphere. It has collided with a small dwarf planet from uh, the uh, sun's innermost belt a few million years ago, leaving the crater on its star face inside, which you can see right there. Very nice. Okay. Cool. Next up, we've got Yanton, which is here. Mars side world with a thin mint coloured atmosphere. Its mint coloured valleys are possible lakes of methane mixed with a not yet discovered compound. Freezing lakes even during Yanton's almost 100 degree days. Oh wow, we okay. Cool. Okay, next up we got um, Jeton, the equivalent of Mars. It is seen comfortably within the Hattable zone. It's also disputed whether. Um, or not, it used to have water and turned life in the past. It has two asteroid moons, Phomos and Debols. <laughs> While Mars' moon Phobos is moving inwards and it will get torn apart by Mars, this moon Phomos is moving further away. In a few billion years, Geton will be the only left of one moon. So you got the Phobos and Deimos equivalent, very nice. Cool. And then the planet itself, looking good. Cool. Alright, so next up we've got Mess. A small red dwarf with a thin ring. So that's where is that? So we're going all the way over. Oh, where, where are we? So, where, where is, Where's that mess? Where is that? Uh, mess. Aha! Wait, oh, small red dwarf planet. I thought it meant red dwarf. I thought it said red dwarf stars. Looking for a star. <laughs> With a thin ring. There you go. Cool. That really threw me off for a second there. Right, next up we got Scowl. Which is the other one in here. This light brown rock collided with a large asteroid not too long ago, creating its massive crater, which covers half of the dwarf planet, revealing how... Revealing its now solidified mantle, giving it almost 90% tilt and creating a very asteroid moon. That's a massive smash on it. Look at that. Huge, huge one there. Here's the other one. Cool. Very, very nice. Okay. So next up we have got uh, Falenia and Noctom Cordum. Comets in the second uh, belt. Um, so Noctum Cordum means knight's tail in Latin. Both comets have a mix of white and cyan or light blue colour. Nice. So there's one there, as you can see. Very nice. That's the first one. So where is Felina? Where's that one? Not sure I can see it, actually. Where, where is it? Is it that orbit there? Ah, there it is. Yeah, it is. Cool. Oh, that's really nice. Stop closing. I'm not trying to close. I'm trying to prompt this. There we go. There's the other one. Cool. All right. Nice. All right. Next up, we've got Neotis, which is the blue one. It's a gas giant. It's own ring system as well. The first and smallest gas giant in the system. It has four major moons and nine asteroid moons, as well as a giant ring system within three or four moons reside. 
Okay. They're very close together, these moons as well. That's so annoying. Stop doing that. Right. Um, Sonderlass is its closest moon. It is a frozen wasteland with a thin oxygen heavy atmosphere. Very nice. We've got Tin. The second moon and the largest moon in the entire system. It has a thick methane atmosphere and a cold desert below. Besides, it also has a magnetic field. Oh, okay. Nice. Then we got Icy. Or Isis. It's the third major moon. It's a frozen well with a thing ring system. A lot of rings in here. Looking good. Then we got Anten over here. The last and smallest of the Neotis major moons. It always has the most essential core, but out of the major moons. Then we got Tor, which is the largest of the asteroid moons out here. This dark space rock has a moon of its own, a moonlit, and a very weak magnetic field. It is thought to have a lot of uh, magnetite on its surface, causing its dark colour and its magnetosphere. Over here. That's its moon. Nice. So there they are. So next up we've got 84 Rend. Over here. Got 85 Rend. <laughs> so, what is this? It's looking pretty uh, beaten up. Population, abandoned, conditions. It orbits a sun-like star at far distance, making it inhospitable. Cold conditions, constant blizzards decrease visibility. History, several, fam several famous travellers went missing here, giving it a reputation. Their bodies are unlikely to be found due to the dwarf planet's conditions. Interesting. It's got a set of moons as well. Let's see if any of them are worthy. Let's have a look. I think they're all just asteroid ones. Yep. Cool. All right. Interesting stuff. So, some history behind that world there. Next up, we've got Lonero's. There it is. This dark grey uh, red world is the largest dwarf planet in the system and has an oxygen nitrogen atmosphere and five moons. Okie dokie. Moons. Oh, asteroids, as we can see. Cool. So next up, we've got Temmo. Which is this one. It has the lowest albedo in the entire system, caused by its very, very dark grey colour. It has a thin atmosphere and a small ring system as well. You can just about see the rings with the background behind it there. Okay. Cool. Next up we've got Saw. A brown and mint world. So where's that? Can't spot it. Oh, there it is. Very, very... Oh, that one wasn't easy to find. That moon is ridiculously close. Oh my gosh. A brown and mint world that has one moon almost half its size. Vast is the moon. It's so large it is a binary uh, planter, a partial binary. That Barry Center would probably be in the middle of those two, like Pluto and uh, Sheron are. Cool. Next up, we've got Nox, Ox, and Pax are the Outer Belt's comets. Okay. So, what are these guys here? They're comets. Cool. Right. Now, taking a big jump. So, we're around the second star now. I think. No, we're not. We're going further out. So next up, we've got Liberty. And this, and this is me in complete darkness, isn't it? Yeah. This Jupiter-sized world has been flung out by um, the star, given its current orbit. It has a ginormous magnetosphere reaching out to almost half an AU from Liberty. It also has four moons. Okay, so that is a very, very expelled world there. There's its moons. Cool. Kind of like the Galilean moons in some ways as well. The quality over here. The Super Neptune has also been flung up by stars, losing its second moon. Its atmosphere is made of methane and sulfur dioxide, giving it a greenish yellow colour. It has one moon. That's Nixie over here. Got its own little ring system as well, this guy. But again, in complete darkness. Without its second moon's influence migrating inwards, ruining the ring system, capturing about 10 larger particles in its own orbit. So it's caught some of the rings. Pretty cool. Then we got Freighter Nitty. Is this one here? So also rejected. Still hanging on though. Oh my god, stop doing that. That's so annoying. If you miss if you just miss by a second. Oh, I just deleted it. If you just miss by a second, you'll close the thing, and that's complete darkness as well. This super earth with a Venus-like atmosphere has also been flung out, and now the furthest point in this orbit is a whopping 0 0.175 light years from uh, the star. Okay, cool. Alright, so are we now so next up we're going to uh solis that's the other star which is here right 
That's how for a red dwarf, that's got a lot of planets. Okay, so looking good. Red Dwarf Star and the Binary Partner of a Calaris. This star hosts five planets and one Astro Belt. It originally was in the binary with the star um, Celebes, but their binary passed through Calaris system, causing Solaris to be oh, Solis Solaris to be captured while Salvis was flung into interstellar space. So there was another star, which is uh, here at one point. Um, next up, we've got Sultonia, the first planet around this star. It's also the smallest entirely locked face in a thousand degrees. Oh yeah. Look how many particles were over there behind us. That is mad. Uh, next up we've got Pulsed. With that, the accent on it. Um, it is a hot world with a small amount of water. But it's uninhabitable for humans due to the lack of oxygen. Weak magnetic field in high temperatures. But it does have so developing life in its oceans and lakes as well as vegetation. Cool. Next up we've got Hyber. This uh, green world is inhabited by giant insect-like creatures due to its oxygen-heavy atmosphere. Unfortunately, the amount of oxygen is deadly to humans, meaning it cannot be colonised at the moment. Besides, I don't think anyone wants to live alongside 10 metre long centipedes and human-sized mosquitoes. Hyber also has one moon. We've got moss. This tiny mint green boy is an interesting one. It escapes Hyber's sphere of influence and gets recaptured into orbit every 300 to 400 million years. Cool. Next up, we got a uh, tire on over here. The harbour of human life and colonization of Oxlon AB and other nearby systems. Uh, Tyron has of uh, Tyron has nearly perfect conditions. For humans, aside from its extremely cold temperatures, there are currently 70 million humans living on it. It also has two moons. You can see the very big North Pole area there. A lot of ice. We've got the moons. One there, and then the second one over here. Cool. Next up, we've got Mallows. So that's a super earth next up, which is here. Oh, it's a gas giant, actually. This large super earth is an ocean planet, meaning its surface is covered by one massive ocean. It has a very thick, almost gas giant atmosphere, causing it to look like a gas giant than anything else. It has two major moons and five small asteroid moons. Okay. So, first up, we've got Sea Caps Moon. So, that's named after the curator of this system. It's very small. It's a shepherd moon of Mallows, keeping its rings within its orbit. Its poles are very fat and offer some great views of Mallows' moon system and the planet itself. Let's have a look at that. A little look down here, because it's a little, uh, little glitched out in this thing's texture. There's the parent planet. It's a bit annoying that the uh, thing's glitched. Let's try uh, entering at a different angle. Yeah, that's a little better. So if you look around, you get that in the sky. Very nice. Cool. Next up, we've got uh, Noltar over here. This bluish grey rock was the first moon ever discovered in the Earth's gravitational lensing based telescope, which launched from Proxima Centauri B in 2417. So, next up, we've got this one Dole. Not really an interesting moon. Its oxygen is often charged, or, or its orbit is often charged or tilted by Enter. Um, We've got a few more little asteroid moons out there as well. Look here. It's one, two, and three. Right now we're taking a big jump out to Dant. Oh, it also said about the moon. So Ox Long BF three to four. Four asteroid moons and mallows. They are highly unstable and often break off and get recaptured. So the ones we just looked at. Next up we've got Dant. Oh, fun fact, the four outer planets of um, Solus are in orbital resonance. Uh, three to two between Post and Hyber, three, uh, five to three between Hyber and Tyron, and five to one between uh, Tyron and Mallows. Basically, every three orbits, Post finishes, Hyber finishes. Oh, okay, so they oh, so every orbit of the outer ones, the inner ones do multiple. Gotcha, okay. Parts of their orbits linked to Wikipedia. Is here. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, anyways, moving on, we got Dant. This red, dark red dwarf planet is the only one of its kind in the Celeus Astro Belt. It has one moon. It's like that red dwarf planet we saw earlier that I thought was a red dwarf star. <laughs> it's got a moon as well. Cool. Oh, Salbis. The original binary park to Celeus. After Stingshot in past Calaris, it 
and it and its free planet system flew past another sun-like star, this time with five AU of it, causing its planet's orbits to be elongated and destabilized. Its planetary system is for you to explore. This game with the moon, Rasti has a tendency to break, can be fixed by its resetting its sea level. Um, okay, so where, where, where are those guys then? So let's zoom out. We've done all those. Is it further out than that then? Or? Aha! So this is the ejected star. Oh, stop doing it. I re that is so annoying. You have to wait till the circle's on it, then you can go there. Right. I hope you enjoyed my system, and I wish you great travels in other systems. C-cap. Oh, thank you very much. That was very enjoyable. Um, so, here we go. This is the other star. This is the ejected one. It's nowhere near as uh, bright or luminous as the sun. So, the planets. Here we go. First of them here. Good. Was this the one with the sea? I'm not sure which one was the sea level one. Uh, Yaxdia, that's a gas giant. Got Zoomy over here. Cool. Then we got uh, Rasty over here. Cool. And then last planet over here, Luna. Another gas world. Cool. NT over here, alright, moon, and I think that is everyone, so three planets, formerly part of the system but was tossed out, cool, now this, was this the one that meant to have the sea level on it, I'm not sure, I think it may have been this one, but there's a bit of water on it if that was the intended one, but um, yeah, there we are guys, so that is everything for this system, so let's just line everyone up, there you go, looking good. So there's a lot of nice range of gas giants in there. I did like the Mallows one. That was a nice looking one. But yeah, there we are. So again, a massive thank you to the creator of this system, CCAP, for sending their system. And if you guys enjoyed it, make sure to press that like button down below. Let us know what you think of the system as well. Let's see if we can go for 200 likes on today's video, guys. And if you haven't already, also press the subscribe button. Help us on the journey to 40,000 subscribers. With that all said done, everyone, make sure you have a great day. Safe health out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.